a comet strike may have sparked civilization shift. This article coming out today rose my eyebrow because it seemed like simple rehashing of what we already have known for over a decade, that we may not be looking for a comet. It might be something else. Now, the paper itself, the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, review of the impact evidence, well, that shows you exactly why they came up with that title. They were reviewing the impact evidence, not the cosmic catastrophe evidence as a whole. And when you do that, well, you miss out on a lot of the cosmic catastrophe triggers like the magnetic excursion. Now, we know that magnetic excursions seem to happen on a 12,000 year plus or minus 1,000 year periodicity. And that lines up right with the Yuga cycle, the cosmic cycle, the great year, and anyone that is claiming there's a cycle between 24 and 26,000 years, they're on point. And a huge waterfall of information has come out on hominid anthropology and archaeology in recent days. But before we get to that, let's just revisit the beginning here, a comet strike. Now, Graham Hancock has been writing about this comet for a decade, and it's what made him famous. So to give him new information and to have him shift his narrative right before, at the end of his life is ridiculous. So that's not going to happen. But there is evidence of a cometary strike during the Younger Dryas. The only problem is it wasn't a comet. There might be been cometary-like fragments, but when the sun explodes or outbursts, it pushes all the cometary debris between the sun and the earth onto the earth, as well as many other things. And this just happened to happen during a geomagnetic field intensity shift. And we know the role of geomagnetic field intensity on late quaternary evolution. We've covered this paper, maybe this is our 10th time, that literally when the field strength goes low, extinction events occur. Here's the extinction of Neanderthal around 41, 42,000 years ago. And other hominids here go extinct on these low field intensities. So there's a direct connection between the field intensity and speciation on Earth. And now, in the last week, we have a cascade of information coming, about, coming in about hominids. A cave nestled in the Russian mountains could solve an ancient human mystery. And let's get to that. DNA from sediment reveals the epic history of a Denisovian cave for the last 300,000 years. Pleistocene sediment DNA reveals hominin and faunal turnovers at the Denisovian cave, corroborating the magnetic reversal hypothesis. But to make it even ever more interesting, in the last week, a paper coming out, New Ancient Human Discovery upends the history of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Middle Pleistocene Homo from the Nesher Ramla, Israel. Now, our understanding of the origin and distribution and evolution of early humans is quite limited. If you don't know, after you go back a few hundred years, it's almost impossible to find human bones. Now, and it's also impossible to find bones of their close relatives. And this uh, has been greatly refined recently using DNA data. And they find just small fragments of bones and, and new things happen. Like this groundbreaking study. Uh, someone in China actually hid a skull in a well for 85 years because they were uh, removing evidence of giants and other things. And now we have a newly discovered human called Dragon Man. And this is our true sister species based on all the evidence that I've seen. It's not Neanderthal. It's not Denisovian. It's this guy right here, Dragon Man. A comprehensive analysis of unusually large skull found in Habrit, China, has led to the reported discovery of a previously unknown species. Now, the skull was gigantic and thick, but the brain was the same size as ours. And that's probably because people were getting hit on the head a lot. And this species developed a thick head so that you couldn't sucker punch him. And I think it's a pretty good-looking hominid there. 
Dragon Man dated back some 146,000 years, but up to 300,000 years based on the dating mechanisms. And it has been named Homo longi, or L-O-N-G-I. And Homo longi is closer to us than Neanderthal and Denisovian, and therefore it is our most recent ancestor, which again is not an ape and has no hair on the shoulders, according to this picture. But I digress. This is all just made up fairy tales based on small fragments of bones. But based on the analysis, I believe that they are correct. Late middle Pleistocene hairbin cranium represents a new homo species. And we're not talking about a gay man. We're talking about a new man or woman geochemical provenancing and direct dating of the Harbin archaic human cranium. We're going to leave you links to all these papers. Massive cranium from the Harbin in Northeast China establishes new Pleistocene human lineage. Well, we have a new graphical abstract on not out of Africa, but maybe out of somewhere else. And I just love the cascade of anthropology, archaeology, and cosmic catastrophe information that has rained down on us in recent times. And here is the new phylogenetic analysis, which is really showing us nothing. But it is showing us that some of our earliest ancestors are coming out of East Asia, not China. I mean, China, not Africa. <laughs> My bad, kids. But this uh, picture is obviously way too low resolution, so we're not going to be using that anymore. But just to recap real quick, I just wanted to bring you up to speed on multiple discoveries. A cave nestled in the Russian mountains could solve an ancient human mystery. And that is DNA from sediments reveal an epic his history of the Denisovian cave, which we will leave you links to the paper for you to peruse all the information. And also another discovery upends the history of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens in Israel the middle Pleistocene homo from the Nesher Ramallah, and in fact, an entirely new species of hominin, the closest, uh, this should be front page news, this is the closest ancestor to us, Homo sapiens sapien, and maybe the one that was genetically modified by aliens. Wow, did I just say that? In fact, I did. I'm going to leave you all the links to all three papers on this new discovery. Boom to knowledge. That's what it was. A boom right in your face. What a disgrace. I can't believe the mainstream has not picked up on this most impressive discovery of Dragon Man, our closest potential hominid relative, maybe going extinct 127,000 years ago or so, far before Neanderthals, but our closest genetic link whatsoever. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as we are flooded with actual information because it's all about to go away when the grid goes. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, the people that share these videos. You're all heroes and we love you. That's a boom to knowledge. Be safe. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more of it and we'll see you soon over at Orb. Na -na -na -na.